Welcome to Encounter Wargaming, I'm Jay, and today we're going to be building a Miyazaki team in a day. So I'd like to give a thanks to one of our subscribers, Neil McBrain. You commented on a previous video that you wanted to see Miyazaki next. And as much as I try to make my subscribers happy, of course, that's what we're doing. So, of course, I'm still going to be following Glenn's blog um, on the optimal builds for each sponsor. So I'm following in suit. Uh, we're doing Miyazaki this time around. And basically on his blog, all he's pretty much recommended that we add is just a bunch of sponsor perks to these vehicles. So I'm going to be building a performance car and a buggy today. And then, of course... There's not going to really be any conversion involved, but I am going to try something new with a paint job, so we'll see how that goes. Um, I've decided to do like sort of a cherry blossom kind of pattern on them to sort of give them that Japanese feel, because let's face it, otherwise they're just going to look like normal Hot Wheels cars, right? we got to give them something to make them look kind of Japanese-y, uh, especially, like I said, because they have no weapons or real enhancements other than just sponsored perks, so yeah. That means I don't have to get too crazy with the conversions, but at the same time, the great thing about Gaslands is it's allowed me to experiment with so many different painting techniques that I hadn't really worked with before. Um, and so this is something new that I'm trying, and we're going to see if it works out. Hopefully it does. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into actually painting, building and painting these crazy guys. So the Miyazaki team, Glenn actually recommends that we use a performance car and a buggy. So I've got another, I've got this sweet ass race car I got in that pile. <clears throat> I think it looks pretty cool. It's even got a little dude in it, which is kind of neat. However, I don't think I'll be able to paint said dude. Can I take this off at all? Nah. Nah, it's probably, yeah. It's probably held it underneath. I'd probably have to take the bottom out and then take that out. Yeah, no, fuck that. Uh, anyway, and I've got another one of these Doom Daddy buggies that uh, I got a bunch of these in that box of Matchbox cars, so uh, or Hot Wheels cars, so might as well use them, right? So uh, Glenn actually recommended both of these with like a crap ton of perks on top of them, so there's no actual real modification I need to do to these. Even though I don't need to add weapons and things like that, sometimes I would still add bits um, just to make you know make them look post-apocalyptic, Mad Maxi, Gaslands worthy. In this case though, I think I'm actually going to just experiment with some new paint schemes rather than actually make them look all crazy because we're kind of going for like a Japanese theme, right? So I figure, you know, everything's going to be crisp, clean. I mean, obviously I'm still going to do like, you know, the, the sponge paint rust and all that kind of stuff because let's face it, it just looks awesome. Um, but I think I'm going to try and do some crazy design. So I've seen like, uh, I've seen people do their cars like Japanese flags, I've seen them do all kinds of crazy designs and stuff, cement like uh, geometric patterns and things like that. I think what I actually want to do is like this picture here, where it's just kind of those like Japanese flowers, you know what I mean? Just that very nice, cool, but still badass. I don't know how to say it, like smooth and pretty, but at the same time being very intricate and awesome. So, <laughs> I mean, I've never tried anything like that before. A pattern like that seems to be relatively simple, especially on something this small. So uh, I'm going to stop rambling and basically I'm going to start by actually painting these white. Uh, normally I would prime things black, but of course in this case, I want the basic color to be a white or an off-white gray, so I'm going to start by priming them white. So let's prime them white. Boom, they're white. So I'm actually not going to do them white, I want to obviously do them off-white, so I'm going to start by base coating them a heavy blue-gray by uh, Vallejo Game Color. So I guess I'm basically just going to paint the entire car's gray. Let's do it. I'd probably let it go. Now we're going to paint all of the silver details with Vallejo Silver. Alright, so now that my metallic, I've got my two base colors on there, I think I want to start doing my flower pattern now because I'm going to need to still do black, I'm going to need to paint the windows, and I think with this basic pattern, 
since we kind of want it to have like already been on there before the paint was chipped and rusted and all that kind of stuff I'm gonna have to do it at this stage and then I'm gonna do a little bit of highlighting and what have you and then apply all our weathering um, so I think it's a good idea to paint the windows after we've done all of that because of course you know like I said in past videos I don't want to get rust on the windows and what have you and whatever so like windows are like one of the last things we're gonna do uh, windows lights lenses that kind of thing um, yeah so at this point so let's take a look at that original drawing that I was basing this on or the original painting I was basing this on as you can see it looks like the branch is going behind the flowers and the way you would paint that is you know logically you would think you would paint the branch first and then all the flowers on top but looking at it with painting something like that where something is behind something you actually want to start with the foreground first and then start adding in the background uh, layers so we're gonna start by putting some red dots on these guys and I'm going to start as I usually do when it comes to red with Doombull Brown because even though it's technically a brown it's a very red brown and works as a great base and then I'm also going to use what is this called now? My fist on red, what used to be blood red and whatever. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna put dots of these two shades, and then when I highlight up, I'm gonna use other reds, pinks, etc. Uh, once I'm past the wash stage and all of that kind of stuff. So I'm basically just gonna do dots of the Doom Bowl Brown and dots of Miss Fist on Red, just in sort of random spots throughout the vehicle. But I want to make sure at the same time I sort of cluster them together in areas as if a cherry blossom would be. You know what I'm saying? Maybe back here. And I'm just kind of like haphazardly placing them, but at the same time staying within. A certain vicinity. Don't know how else to put that. Uh, yeah, maybe another one running up this way. Don't want to go too crazy with it because it's also with this kind of thing, it's sort of like less is more. Especially because if we put too much effort into these flowers, they're also just going to be covered with rust and bullshit like that anyway. So. It is what it is. Alright, so now that I've done the Doom Bowl Brown, I'm basically just going to go around and sort of stick within the same sort of confines that I've already created with my Doom Bowl Brown and hit it with some Mephiston Red. This is just to provide a couple different shades of red because like I say, I'm also going to work other reds, pinks into this mix eventually once, you know, things are more highlighted and what have you. So as you can see, I'm sort of staying to the same area, randomly throwing dots, sort of halfway overlapping a lot of my uh, darker ones, just like that. Maybe I'll put a few more out, more, fill in these empty gaps, and boom. There's the start of my rose blossoms. And I'm just basically going to keep going around doing that. I think I might actually work a pink into this as well, even at this stage. And then yeah, I've decided to even work a pink shade in at this point, but instead of actual pink, since like I say I'm going to put washes and stuff over top and then hit it with actual pink, I'm going to instead base it with a Bugman's Glow. I think that'll work out fine. So now I'm just going to take a very little bit of black and I'm just going to basically draw my branches now. So again, I wanted to make these bunches of flowers sort of like cone shaped, triangular shaped because that's sort of the way the cherry blossoms actually grow or the cherries actually grow. And then so I just basically drawing black lines randomly along the vehicle. And I want to make sure obviously that I don't overlap my cherry blossoms at any point. Um, just basically, I don't know, going along the outside of them, I guess is the best way to put it. Just like that. And staying simple is better. Don't go overboard doing all these branches all over the place you saw on that bunch. I just did three little lines, and it looks just fine. Uh, same thing down here. Maybe look like the branch is coming out this way. Just 
one sticking out the end here. And maybe one up in this empty space. There we go. Just like that. This guy coming down this way. Actually, it's probably better to connect these. Cool. Because that'll be windows. I don't want to put anything there. It doesn't even matter. But this way, let's do a little on that. Yeah, that looks like a sweet branch. How cool is that? This was a sweet idea. Sweet, and then while I'm doing black, I might as well paint the tires at this stage. Red lines. One, two, three, four. My last base color is going to be Cantor Blue on all the windows, as we've done on all the other vehicles. Again, you can use whatever color you wish to paint your glass. You can do it metallic, whatever. Some people do purple, some people do green. I like the sort of bluish tint to them, because I feel that looks the most like an actual tint. I suppose purple might be closer, but I like the blue look. Plus, blue looks amazing and is super easy to highlight. So basically I'm just painting all the glass and I'm going to paint of course the, the probably the floodlights and the front lights with this Cantor blue. Well, we pushed her through. We pulled her along in her entire life. And I think at this stage I'll even take a little bit of red and put it on the rear lights. She ever had. Now that all our base colors are dry, we're going to throw on just some Agrax Earthshade. Just soak these puppies. All right, now that I've given them a nice little wash, I think I'm going to do a little bit of highlighting. Now, I've just realized that I painted the tires and the windows. I mean, it's not necessarily a bad idea that I did that, but it's probably too early, considering I'm going to sponge paint these things, and that sponge paint is going to get all over the place other than just where I want it. So, uh, anyway, without getting too off topic what I want to do right now is I want to just do a little bit of highlighting on these flowers because I really want them to pop out even though this is gonna be like dingy and weathered and what have you I still kind of want them to like come to life you know what I mean so I'm gonna start of course with the red that I started with before but instead of putting it on the red parts what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna put it on those doom bulb brown parts make them go pow you know what I mean and then I'm going to bring it up another layer on the other colors after that. So right now, we're just going to take a little bit of this Mephistone red. A little bit on the tip of my brush. And like I said, I am just going to poke at those specific dots. So let's go around. Find the Doom Bowl brown ones. So boom. 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 And I'm trying to make a smaller dot within the dot, if you can see that clearly there. Just so you can still see that Doom Bowl Brown. But at the same time, I get those red dots. I don't know how clear that is on the camera as far as the color differences. But I hope, because it's in an HD, that you guys could actually see that. <laughs> The next layer, I'm just going to take that same Mephiston red and just work in a little tiny bit of white. Just mix it in there a little bit. Actually, let me get a little bit more white here. There we go. Just to sort of not really create a pink, but I do want to create like a lighter red than the red that I currently have there. Actually, that's a pretty good color I got right there. Okay, and then in this case now, I'm actually going to pick out any of the original red dots that I did before the wash. So there, there, here, there, there, there. Just like that. That looks pretty cool, actually. I like that we have two colors already. We're going to have a third and a second, so let's keep going here. And some of them I actually am hitting the proper red dot, like I said, but then other ones I'm just kind of like, I guess I am still kind of haphazardly throwing them on there. With the intention of hitting the original red dots. So that I still say coherent, but at the same time, 
it still looks random enough. Because then when we hit it with the next color, it's going to just go pow. So anyway, I'm just going to keep going on that. Final color, I'm just going to use a little bit of tentacle pink. And, whoop, knocked over some bits there. I'm going to use a little bit of tentacle pink and try and just hit the areas where I've done the flesh color originally. Just to bring them right up to that nice pink color. And again, I don't have to necessarily always just hit where I put the flesh colored dots. Because like here, for example, it looks very sparse. I'll just throw one in the middle there just to make it look not so sparse. And out here, it looks kind of weird. It gets dark near the edge. I'll just throw one there. Just to add a consistency throughout the whole flower design. And hopefully you guys can see that on camera. It looks amazing in person. And uh, yeah, same thing over here. I'll just keep going like that. All the way around. Um, if you notice, I'm doing very tiny dots. Every time I've done one of these colors, I've been getting these dots slightly smaller and smaller. And the logic there is that that way they won't cover up the other colors that I've already put. But I still want everything to show through. And man, that looks cool. Awesome. I'm loving it. Sweet. That is. That turns out. That turned out better than I actually pictured in my head. So. Uh, yeah, let's keep going on that. Need to push. Need to go. Just to finish them off, as I've explained to you guys before, what I usually do to highlight black, this is Necron Abyss on this, but it's not actually what it is, it's what I call Lamp Black, which is basically a mixture of black, so I guess Abaddon Black or whatever, and uh, bleached bone, so Shopty Bone, I guess. This is actually a mixture of a couple of craft paints of the same color, um, but you can get the same result with Abaddon Black and you shop Deep Uh Yeah, and basically it's just a 50-50 mixture and as you can see it's a very very dark gray. There it is there. Put it on the top so I know which bottle it is. And uh, more or less it's still going to look black but it's going to look highlighted at the same time. So I'm just going to go along my branches and try and paint a very thin line right through the center of them. So that you don't cover the black line that you've already painted. You're just giving it a little highlight just like that. So again, I hope you guys can see that clearly on camera. More or less, I am just going down the center of the black line with this dark gray. It's just going to give it a little third dimension. Just like that. Now we get into the fun part, sponge painting. I love doing the sponging technique just because it's so easy to weather things so quickly. It's just like stupid easy. So in this case too, we want to do a lot less sponge painting than we've been doing in our past videos. Um, just because I don't want to completely cover this awesome design that I've done. I've got to say this has turned out really well. I didn't think it would turn out that well. Uh, so I'm going to take a sponge, this is just a torn off piece from one of those sponge brushes that you get at the dollar store. Um, you can use a piece from your pluck foam cases or whatever, it's exactly the same kind of sponge. Uh, more or less, I am just, so I've got a little bit of silver here, just going to dip it in the silver. And sort of just dab out the sponge until there's like barely any actual paint. I guess very similar to like a dry brush kind of situation, where there's very little actual paint in the sponge. And then, because I want to be precise with it, I'm going to try and use that edge of the sponge, that squared off edge, to just kind of hit around the wheel wells, maybe a little bit along the front there. Yeah, I'm just going to try and basically just get around the wheel wells, just because I don't want to mess up my design, like I said. Just to put some chipping, you know, maybe a little bit here where like, yeah, where you got like a little bit of a raise. Any kind of edges generally benefit from this. And again, this is why I say uh, I shouldn't have done the tires and the windows quite yet because now I'm getting silver all over the windows. But whatever, it is what it is. Hindsight's 2020. 
And yeah, I mean, that's basically it. We've done this in all the other videos, guys, so I mean, this is not something I necessarily need to go through a bunch of times. I just wanted to demonstrate the fact that we are being very sparing with it this time around. I'm just hitting areas I really want to look chipped and damaged. Or leaving the flowers intact, because I really like how that's turned out. So, same thing over here. I'm not going to speed it up, just to show you how quick and easy it actually is. I'm just going all the way along the bottom of the car, around, like I say, around the wheel wells, hitting some of the corners, areas that you think would actually chip, like I say here on the corner. Just a little bit along the back. Again, hit up the wheel wells, because that's where rust generally happens the most on a car, is near the wheels, I guess, from kicking up salt and dirt and whatever else up into those wheel wells. It definitely is the part of the car that stays the wettest the longest. I guess that makes perfect sense. And again, just kind of hitting random areas that look like they're too naked. Cool. Awesome. Next! Next color, we're going to add a little bit of rust to these guys with uh, some Doom Bull Brown, because it's that nice red-brown color. And same technique, I am basically just going to... Whoops, I lost the foam in the paint pot. Yeah, where are my clippers at? Here, I'll just use this to get it out. There we go. Whoops. Pro tip. Don't shove the sponge all the way in the paint pot that you lose it in there. <laughs> uh, genius. What is this, your first time, Jay? Noob. There we go. We got lots of Doom Bowl Brown here. So, once again, dab it out on the paper towel. You don't want too much that it's going to cover up your paint job, but you want just enough that it's just going to add like those little flecks on there in the spots where you want it. And once again, because we want to be very controlled with it, I'm going to use a sharp edge of the sponge to just throw it basically where I've put my silver already. So just a little bit around the wheel well. And I may want to hit some other areas, like of course around the front of this scoop. Because of course that is going to be exposed to the elements quite frequently, just like the bottoms of the car. Ooh, that looks cool. And it just adds that next little bit, you know, like that. The rust just completes it, in my opinion, especially when it comes to Gaslands cars. This is like the be all and end all. Like, such a simple technique that just looks so awesome when implemented. Nice. Love it. In fact, I think I require a little bit on top too. Because that looks a the metal there looks a little too plain. Alright, so there's that. Sweet. Let's go on to the next color. Final color to finish up the rust is Troll Slayer Orange. So I'm going to take some sponge again. A little bit of the orange. As always, dab it out. And then I just want to kind of hit the areas where I've already done the Doom Bowl, but to a lesser degree, very much like the flowers. We want to make sure that we don't cover the color we've already put so that it shows through, but also that we have this obvious enough. Oh, that looks cool. Oh, that looks super cool. Yes. Look at that right there. Whoops, not even in camera. <laughs> Look at that right there. That looks dope. Not only does it look weathered, but you can still see those awesome flower designs. And everything still looks tarnished and gross, post-apocalyptic, blah 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 uh, So yeah, just keep going on this. Like I said before, I should have waited until after I was done the sponge painting to paint the tires and the windows, so... Just like we've done, I'm just going to take the Antar Blue and repaint those windows. Just as we've done in past videos, I am going to do the slow transition, like I always do on the windows, from Cantor Blue to Lotharn Blue, uh, using some Keldor Sky in the middle, so it's good. now that I've painted the Cantor, it's going to be a mixture of these two. 
then this one, then a mixture of these two, finish off with this one, sometimes even still with a little bit of the um, Caldor in there. So I've explained that in all our past Gaslands tutorials. I don't really need to explain this in detail again every time. Uh, this is just the way I like to do the windows. I find this looks good to me, and so yeah, I'm going to keep doing it that way. So I mean, if you guys want to know a little more detail, watch past videos. Basically, I'm just going to do this now, and you guys know what I'm doing. So. Let's do it. While that blue's drying, I'm just going to take some time and touch up the black on all of the tires. Alright, and then to finish these guys off, basically I am just going to paint the windows as I've done with the past bunch of vehicles in this series with a non oil gloss. This not only is going to gloss up the windows, but it's also going to uh, sort of blur the lines between my fade there and how uh, and my lack of painting ability, basically. <laughs> all other projects. And that's all she wrote, ladies and gents. So there's the Miyazaki crew with the sweet little cherry blossoms, still post-apocalyptic, rusted, gross, you know, Mad Max looking, but with a little bit of prettiness and a nice Japanese flair. So I hope you all enjoyed that tutorial, it was super fun for me to try out that cherry blossom pattern. I think it turned out pretty good, what do you guys think? Comment below, tell me what you think. Um, also, if you guys want to see a certain sponsor next, make sure to drop it in the comments. As you can tell, I, uh, I took Nero's uh, advice and did this one. So if you want to see a speci specific sponsor next, uh, rather than just what I'm going to do in my natural progression, then uh, of course comment below. Also guys, if you like this video, please hit the like button and make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on future content. In the description below, a Spreadshirt page where you can pick up one of our awesome t-shirts, a hat, whatever, with our awesome logo on it, and it gets us a couple bucks to help keep the ball rolling around here. And then also, in the description below, check out our Patreon campaign. For as little as a dollar, um, you get a, you get our videos early, you get a whole bunch of extra perks, and it's all there on the page, so check it out. And it just helps us fund this thing we like to call Encounter Wargaming. Uh, other than that, like, comment, and subscribe. Share this with your friends, and we'll see you at our next encounter. Like a monkey in a rocket on his way back home. Okay.